Before the finest sprint car drivers in the nation formed up in the traditional uh, 4x4 parade lap as we get ready to go. 30 laps here, Steve Evans, on this venerable old half mile at Williams Grove. Absolutely. And if you've got a hero sprint car driver and he's not in this race, you better get another hero <laughs> because this is the best in the land and the crowd is up for the four abreast tradition. Uh, they love this sight, not only for the sheer spectacle of it, but it, they know too, Steve, that these guys in a couple of minutes are going to form up two by two and take the green for 30 great laps of racing. Steve Kinzer, Doug Wolfgang, row number one. Row number two, Sammy Swindell, the number one car from Tennessee. Stevie Smith Jr., number 77 from Pennsylvania. Kenny Jacobs, the 29 car. Chris Ish, you get the idea. There are no lightweights. None whatsoever, and guys that can drive out of probably the middle rows to do very, very well here. Pretty rare, though, that you're going to run down a guy like Kinzer or Wolfgang from the middle of the pack unless, of course, uh, something unforeseen happens. And what is sprint car racing but unforeseen events? I'll tell you, anything can happen when you put 24, 8, 7, 800 horsepower automobiles on a half mile dirt track. Well, they formed up two by two. I again have lobbied with the outlaw president, Ted Johnson, to start them four by four. And again, he has threatened to throw <laughs> me off the grounds if I do that one more time. <laughs> well, it'd be a great, great first lap, though. I'll guarantee you that. Oh, boy, it might be the only lap. The crowd is up. You know the drivers' hearts are in their throats. They're on the big half mile of Williams Grove. The A main is underway off turn number four and it's Kinzer out to a big lead down into turn number one right behind him Doug Wolfgang down low Sammy Swindell in the third spot Swindell underneath Wolfgang to take over second and then Wolfgang sweeps right back underneath Sammy but there's no room underneath the Wolf slides higher than he wanted to go in the last three car lanes absolutely a bad bad break for the Wolf and a great move by Sammy Swindell to take that spot but right now it's the 11th car of Steve Kinzer just just driving away from every, everybody. You know, you just don't want to let kids or start on the pole on a nice night like this, Steve. Oh, no, and when you talk to uh, Whoop Gang and Swindell, they both said you just can't let him out of your sight, and that's what they're trying so diligently to do right now. Look at Whoop Gang. He made up for that little bobble up high. He's pulled back up on Sammy. Well, Sammy's got a clear track to chase down uh, Kinzer if he possibly can. But, of course, he's got a distraction to deal with. Wolfgang is all over him on the back. And here's the interval back to Stevie Smith Jr., the number 77 car. And right on his tail and trying to come underneath him, 29, Kenny Jacobs trying to get that fourth position from the orange 77. And here is the fight uh, between Joe Garrity and Chris E. back there in the seventh spot. And now we're back to Stevie Smith Jr., 77-29, Kenny Jacobs. That still is the battle for the fourth position. Young Steve Smith Jr., well ahead of his dad out on the racetrack at the moment. Yeah, he's having a real good go tonight. There is Sammy Swindell. You see the interval between him and Doug Wolfgang. Swindell has spread out substantially. And uh, up in front of him is the leader, Steve Kinzer, with a clear racetrack ahead of him. And sweeping back into view, there's Joe Garrity flashing by the 17W car. Behind him in seventh spot is the yellow machine of Chris Edge, the 17E car. No change there. No, as uh, Garrity seems to be able to hold him off uh, without a whole lot of difficulty. The racetrack is just full of cars. They're all sprung out. Not a whole lot of uh, kind of wheel-to-wheel -wheel action at this point. This is kind of a middle stage of the race. Everybody's kind of finding their way around, getting the groove here. And this racetrack, though, as you said earlier, Steve, just a perfect condition. Well, there's two reasons. We haven't had a lot of accidents. Very good driving and a complete lack of holes in the racetrack to throw the cars askew. Yeah. So, very smooth competition here tonight as we watch the leader, the 11 car of Steve Kinzer, blowing through traffic. There he goes by Joey Allen, and on the high side, way up in the marbles, uh, sets his sight on 65, Johnny Mackinson. So, he's weaving his way through traffic with typical uh, Kinzer skill, no apparent problem right now. The traffic is not even slowing him down, Brock. And that is something that Sammy Swindell and Doug Wolfgang had hoped would happen. But so far, he slices, he dices, he traps his way through without losing a tenth of a second in his lap time. Oh, there he is up high as he moves up on 
Bobby Allen, uh, a very strong contender, and you'll watch how quick, by comparison, Steve Kinzer is tonight. And he just sweeps around Bobby Allen as if he was a ranked novice. And you know that Bobby Allen isn't, and on this racetrack, that's particularly true. Oh, absolutely. And now it's number 12, Steve Stamba, 66 8 Bobby Fletcher are within the sights of Steve Kinzer. Look at him just dice right through. Unbelievable. And there's Wolfgang in the orange car. Sammy Swindell in front of him. And is that Wolfgang going under Swindell or trying to? But he got held up by a slower car. There is Sammy Swindell down the front straightaway by 23. The orange car, Frankie Kerr, into turn number one and two. And he's now underneath the 65 car, Johnny Mackison. There, down the back straightaway, under the bridge. He'll take him as they go down into turn number three. And this time by, 15 laps will be in the books of a scheduled 30. There's the halfway signal. And now Doug Wolfgang in the orange eight is the third driver to get into a lapping posture. Up in front of him, the one black car of Sammy Swindell. And of course, completely out of the picture is Steve Kinzer in the white 11. Well, now the complexion of the race begins to change because tire wear becomes a factor now. You notice that the racing surface is almost like asphalt and becoming very, very abrasive. There's been no cautions. The race has been flat out right for the green flag. And we'll see whose setup is really, really good in these closing laps because if tires start to go away on any of the leaders, we'll see some other people charge through the pack. Well, dirt is such a fickle surface to race on. It depends on water content and ambient air temperature and sunshine and wind and moonlight and all the things that go into it. This has been about as good a one as we've encountered in a long, long time. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. There is Doug Wolfgang still struggling, really, in third place, trying to get around Johnny Mackison in the 65. Notice that all three of your leaders, uh, Wolfgang, Swindell, and the leader, uh, Steve Kinzer, have all chosen the high groove. They're all up, running up high, with, right on that cushion, and that seems to be the quick way around here tonight. Although, notice that Mackison is holding off Wolfgang, uh, as is uh, Kerr in the 23. So, Wolfgang definitely Definitely not running with the kind of strength and power that we're normally used to seeing him use. Well, Brock, I think you hit on it a little earlier. For him to run with Swindell, he's had to run his tires off. He just doesn't have the grip he had earlier on. No, he's falling uh, very, very much back. There is uh, the Wolf, and right now, right behind him is the 77 car of uh, young Stevie Smith Jr. And Smith is right in there. In fact, he could be moving in to try to challenge the Wolf here if uh, if these uh, traf if this traffic continues to be an impedance. Well, Brock, Stevie Smith Jr. in that 77 car has been running along in a nice, strong fourth, no problems holding on to it. But Joe Garrity is coming, the 7TW car, a youngster just about his own age, and look at this fight for the fourth position. In fact, Steve Smith blasted right past Wolfgang, as did Joe Garrity. So Wolfgang definitely faltering here. The car probably uh, losing power way, way down, now falling back as these two youngsters got by him with surprising ease. Boy, these are the two up-and-coming drivers in the Pennsylvania Northeast region. Steve Smith, Jr., 77, 7TW, Joe Garrity. This is the youth movement at work. All right, there's Stevie Smith in the 77. He seems to be able to keep uh, Joe Garrity at bay, but remember how quickly these things can change. Just a few laps earlier, uh, Doug Wolfgang was driving along in good shape, holding them both off, and then all of a sudden, he advanced to the back, but something clearly went wrong. Hard to say whether it's tire wear or traffic, but Steve Kinzer no longer has a distinctive lead over number one, the black car of Sammy Swindell. Swindell is very much in the hunt for this thing. He sure is, there you see the interval. There's your leader, and there is Sammy Swindell. They both got a clear racetrack ahead for the time being, so it's going to get interesting. Remember what Swindell said earlier. It could work both ways. You can let a guy maybe get out there a ways and burn his tires off. That could be happening here. Or maybe Gins is running only as hard as he has to. We've seen him do that before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, though, to see with these two drivers with a clear racetrack and most of the slower traffic behind them, they're going to go man-to-man -man here in the closing stages of this 30-lapper. And they're taking exactly the same line around the racetrack. The high just tucking that right rear wheel, the driving wheel up in the cushion where they hope there's going to be some traction to launch them out of the corner and down these long, high RPM straightaways. All right, 
There's Sammy Swindell. Remember, he shattered the track record here earlier. But right now, the man who is able to hold him at bay with relative ease, it seems, is Steve Kinzer. Trouble on the back straight. Could be a break for Swindell. That is Frankie Kerr, the 23 S car. He is stalled back there. It has brought out the yellow. That means they'll idle around until a tow truck can get out there. And then Swindell will be able to close up to Steve Kinzer, right? On his nerf bar when we get a green and Frankie Kerr obviously all right no problem uh, just parked for the night so we're going to have to get a push car out here either restart him or get him into the pits in the meantime the cars will reform single file and we're going to see a restart we are going to see a two lap shootout when that happens because that's really all that's left in the A feature here at Williams Grove stay with us Kenzer Swindell mano a mano who'd leave now under caution here at Williams Grove. Two laps remaining in the World of Outlaws Keystone Clash. As everybody forms up behind Steve Kinzer, the leader, Sammy Swindell in second, Joe Garrity showing surprising strength in third, Donnie Kreitz, a local favorite, as is Kenny Jacobson, fourth and fifth. And sixth spot, Stevie Smith Jr. has faded a bit. Keith Kaufman not running like he'd like to tonight. Chris Eish, Craig Keel in the eight, and Steve Smith Sr. rounding out the top ten. So uh, at this particular point, though, Steve Evans, I think it boils down to two men. The 11 car of Steve Kinzer and the black uh, number one of Sammy Swindell. They're the only guys that are really, I would imagine, unless we see something really crazy happen, have got a shot at victory. They could get a green light here any time. They've got one right now. Steve Kinzer up high, the white 11 car. He was up high with the RPMs up. Sammy Swindell was down low, and that may cost him this, Brock. Well, they got the green coming off turn number two. So uh, I, it may have been that Sammy wasn't quite ready for the restart, but Kinzer sure was, and he just blows away from everybody. What power and uh, handling he's got in that race car tonight. So two laps to go really turned into two and three quarters because around the stripe right now, we should see, there it is. Yeah, now the two lap sign, and look at the lead. Kinzer has over Swindell. Good grief. Yeah, it's unbelievable. He is just dominant tonight. Some nights uh, he is so hooked up, it seems as if he's running in another class of race car entirely. And that is the way Steve Kinzer is operating. Right behind him, one of the very best in the business, Sammy Swindell, but he just can't handle uh, the 11 automobile. And I would have to say, too, that Kinzer is more adept at this shape of a racetrack with the long straightaways and the tight corners, not to be redundant. Some like it, some don't. Kendra thrives on it because he's got a lot of horsepower in yeah. his Uncle Clarell's motors. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't, there's a checkered flag, he wins it. I don't think I've seen a racetrack that he isn't good on. He is unbelievable. There's Joe Garrity coming down for a well-deserved third place. He started back in seventh and moved through the field in the third against this bunch and this guy in particular, Steve Kinzer in the 11 car. A man who has dominated sprint car racing for almost a decade, an unbelievable career. Well, so much for our guest that his tires might be going away. That's right. On the restart, he was more like a rocket ship than a sprint car. <laughs> Probably run another 30 laps without any problem at all. The credit, of course, has to go not only to Steve, but to his uncle, Carl Kenzer, who does such a marvelous job of setting up this race car for his uh, nephew season in and season out. They have a few dry spells every once in a while, but it only lasts for a couple of races, and then they're right back out in front. Stay with us. We'll see what Steve Kenzer and the rest have to say about it. Lane to talk to Steve Kenzer. Let's have a look at the final standings of the Keystone Clash. In second, Sammy Swindell, Joe Garrity in third, Kenny Jacobs, Steve Smith Jr. round out the top five. Excellent work by all these men. Donnie Kreitz started way back in 17th, got as high as fourth, and fell back at the end of sixth. Kaufman, Ish, Craig Keel, and Mark Kenzer in the top ten. And now, let's go to Steve. Horace Bauer. Horsepower and more horsepower. Oh. Great job. Well, the car was working good. That makes horsepower sometimes, but it don't. Uh, he don't have no shabby motor in it either. You think you really had a horsepower? It sure appeared to. It was pulling the front wheel, Steve, coming down the front straightaway, hiking him a foot in the air. Well, uh, like I said, the car was working good, and and I've got two races on this motor, and it's running pretty good also. Indeed it is. Again, a great job. $8,000 in the Kenzer bank account. you got to feel good. Thank you. Well, it's, like I said, I want to thank Carl Kenzer and Maxim Chassis. Absolutely.